Hello, Lola's Happy New Year. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope everybody made it into 2022. If you did and you're watching this video, you are blessed. Let's start there. Um, so this year, I hope this year be a lot better <laughs> than last year. As we always hope, the next year is going to be the best year. I'm not going to be one of those people that be like, this is my year because every year is my year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, Lola's, I have Vegas here, which you guys are going to see a lot of Vegas. Um, just simply because I just, I just love him. I'm like still like in that I can't believe I actually got a chance to paint me a sleeper for myself type situation. So, you know, that's where I'm at with it. Um, I'm actually, I'm so, like, I'm so, um, like, I don't want to, I don't want to put him back on the table because I want to keep, like, holding him and picking him up and moving him around and, looking at him and stuff but then when he goes on the table he got to be in the little incubator and it's just you know I just don't feel like that but I think I am going to give him a good little um uh, little bath and go ahead and um uh, do all his touch-ups um this week so that I can um get prepared to start to root in him um that way he'll be fully fully complete but I'm okay with him being bald for now. Um, so, yeah. Um, I've been showing him off a lot. And it's just because I was so proud of how he turned out. And he's not matching, no. <laughs> and, you know, I have to say, I say this over and over again. Anybody that follows me know how much I reshare um, Kaysen's pictures which is the willow asleep that I painted I think he was the third silicone baby that I ever painted and when I had him here <laughs> I at the time I had Noah here too and um I I just I just loved him because you know I just I don't know I just I just loved Kaysen I love Kaysen so much and um his mom just takes great pictures of him and stuff and I just I don't know I just I just really loved um loved him I, I mean i still love him not loved him and so um she's had him for at least two years and she still loves him the same which means a lot to me i think it means a lot to um and i know i'm going to say um a lot i think it means a lot to artists or painters whatever you want to call us when we paint babies and sell them and the mommies keep them for like ever or like love them for long periods of time. However, and I've, I've had this conversation with several of my um, Dolly Sis and friends in the community or just other collectors where they say, I feel guilty when I get ready to sell a baby. Like, I feel guilty. I don't, I don't want to hurt the artist's feeling. Um, I do know that there are some artists out there that is very funny about, um, you selling their work um they do feel slighted or feel you know bad or something like that i am not one i know that there's a lot of artists that understands the process these dolls are very expensive time evolves sculpts evolves our feelings change we start to like something else a little bit more or you know we want something else but the only way we can get it is to sacrifice another baby that we actually love so it happens and um, I think that collectors shouldn't be made to feel guilty about it. Uh, I do, like I said, I do hate when one just keep being tossed around, tossed around, tossed around, tossed around type scenario. Um, the other thing that is a big thing about people selling, you know, collectors selling their dolls is how much they sell them for. You know, some collectors, they got money, they're balling, or they just don't care, and or they are being um, bullied and intimidated and felt like they need to sell their dolls less than what they're worth. And they will sell the dolls for a fraction of what they pay. And that's great for us that buy secondhand and we can grab it. But at the same time, that collector is losing so much money on a baby that's still 
look the same way as when they got it. I personally do not do that. I don't sell my babies for a lot less than what I paid. I have sold them for less than what I paid, but usually not a whole lot. Um, I don't make it a habit of buying babies just to buy them low and sell them high. People call them doll flippers. Um, a lot of people frown upon that. I think that's a little like, eh, you know, but I, I honestly don't have a problem when someone buy a baby for me. They've kept it for a while. Even if they don't keep it a while, they, they, they got it. Maybe at that point, my babies normally sell at XYZ price and I priced it lower because I said, if you buy it today, I'm going to sell it at this because I was looking for a quick sale. Maybe they got a they got a discount. Maybe they got a deal. You know, maybe because they bought seven babies from me, I said I'm gonna take you know four hundred dollars off. You know, type thing. Then, by all means, if they sell that baby higher than what they paid for me, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I I have gotten certain mommies come back to me and say, how much should I sell this baby for? Or if they they go get the baby rooted. You think they're supposed to lose the money for the hair that they they have rooted? Or here's another thing people don't take in, into consideration as well. A lot of times when a person have had a baby in their collection for a while, and it's not like what we call, like, I'm going to say designer babies, like the Roman Stridens, Claire Taylors, you know, Joanna K, them type babies that might come with specific signature items. And these are very elite um, sculptors or whatever out here. Then... You know, and they just came with different items. We tend not to send those items. We usually go out and buy. A lot of people go out. Well, I know I do go out and buy new items a lot of times. Um, Sometimes I will. Like if it's a quick turnaround, I'll just send, you know, pretty much everything that came with it or some of the stuff depending on what I sell it for. Um, But a lot of people, they go out and buy new outfits, they got to pay for shipping, they're going to lose fees for PayPal, all that stuff. And if they sell it on eBay, oh my gosh, you're already looking at like a 14% loss right there if you try to put it at the same price. So yeah, at those cases, sometimes people, they they, they increase the price, but really the, the seller is not getting all that money. They actually probably still going to come up less than what they actually paid for the doll. So you have to keep all that in mind, but when you have people spewing so much negative um, energy and, um, t you know, saying all these things in the back, oh, she sell her dolls high, she this, this, that, and, and you're, you're new into the community and you don't really know what's going on, you kind of get lost in the sauce and get caught up and you miss out on great opportunities just because your friends think that's a bad idea. Um, for me... If I think the baby is worth whatever price it is, that's how I determine if I'm going to buy it. I don't care how much they paid for it. I don't care, you know, this and that. Sometimes I do want to know the history of the doll because I know certain collectors do certain crazy things with their dolls. And I don't want those dolls in my collection. Or, um, for instance, um, I tend to think I have an allergy to cats. It may just be more of a phobia, but I know, well, in the past, one of my biggest things were with the cats were my grandmother was extremely allergic to cats and she would come over and I always you know show her my dolls or I would take my dolls to my grandmother to see and god forbid if it had some cat hair or cat dander or whatever on on my doll and she has allergic reaction which her throat starts to close up and stuff like that so that was a big issue for me, you know, do you have pets? There are your pets around your 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 dolls because here's 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 the thing, is guys. A lot of people see like people pa pass out all these false narratives about people and, you know, when I used to be like I used to make a big deal about the cat thing, right? But what people don't understand is like m almost most most of the people, the artists that I bought from have cats. <laughs> they have cats. Um, do they let them crawl all over their babies? No. Um, are they in their, their nursery or their dog room for their, the babies that they sell? No, as far as I know. Now, I don't know, you know, little whispers might be sitting there on the countertop and I just, they just never told me. But if they let me know that they have a cat, the only thing I do is when it first come, um, 
to the house. I strip everything down. I, I for one, I sit the box outside in the garage or whatever. Um, right away, I, I, you know, it's just certain precautions I take so that I don't start, you know, gagging or feeling like I'm having an allergic reaction, itching, my eyes itching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and it's an easy fix. Throw the baby clothes in the washer. Done. You know what I mean? I'm not turning like I'm not I'm I'm not one of those people that is so closed minded when it comes to this art. Like I've I've done things that I've never done. I got on my first plane just so I can go to a doll show. I've never been on a plane that I would never fly. This 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 hobby has taken me into directions that I thought I would never do. I said I would never paint a doll. And here I am painting dolls. I said I would never paint reborns and then when i started painting i said oh definitely hands off silicone uh, no way you not get me to to paint a silicone baby and then here i am painting silicone um i said i'd never do customs i i have done some customs um so leading up to that um so i've had a couple people message me and ask me like where do i sell my babies and i'm, I'm i'd be like really perplexed because i'm like i was sharing them into the chatterbox first um all the time now i share them in the chatterbox and on my facebook and on instagram um and on my stories and so um when people will be like i never see them up for sale i'm like but they have been so i don't know you know maybe it's the algorithm or whatever the case may be but that's where i, I place my dolls up for sale um Sometimes people reach out to me before I even put the doll up for sale and the doll gets sold. That happens, I won't lie. Um, like, a lot of my babies get sold before they're even advertised. But that's, it just happens, you know. I I, I really, honestly, I'm not going to turn down money. Um, so, I was going to put him on this <laughs> and the socks. And I just, I done been talking and running my mouth. But I was thinking about, you know, maybe he could wear some clothes. But I just like it. What, don't he look better with cl without clothes, guys? Like, for real. Like, these little blue socks is giving me life. But I was going to put him on these socks and just leave him with that hat. Oh, y'all can't see. So he got those, those socks. I was going to put him on with these socks. Let's do that. Ugh, I hate it. I hate to change him. He, he don't want it. <laughs> so, anyway. But, yeah. So that's that's that um customs i said this year that i was going to try to give customs a go again and i think i will do some customs still but i'll be honest with you guys <laughs> don't hate me um i'll probably well i need to change this diaper <laughs> i know it's like how many diapers do the baby wear um I probably will still do um, do some customs, but I will I will be honest and say that um, I don't I don't think I'll do a lot. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Um, I think that the um, I have had like this time around I've had like a really nice set of people and I feel as relaxed as I think I will ever feel doing customs like I feel free I don't feel like I'm being rushed I don't I don't have none of those pressures but it's always that pressure that what if the end product is not what they expect or they want and that's pressure from myself so I, I think that there's going to always be a level of pressure, more pressure with customs than it would be if I'm just painting for myself. Because um, this is funny. I know y'all think I'm lying when I say this, but when I was painting Vegas, he did not come out like I expected him to. That's not what I was going for um, necessarily. Um, I did love the outcome, but it wasn't necessarily where I thought I was going with it and you know I know y'all hear this all the time if you in if you're in the community I know you hear all the time where artists be like 
Oh, I'm just gonna let the baby point me in the direction, and the baby just took its own course and all this and stuff. And you be like, girl, y'all, what y'all think? Y'all over there doing some Houdini crap or something? Like how the baby just took you in its own direction and all this and stuff. Like I've been hearing that since I've been in this hobby and, but I get it. Like, I don't know. Like I, I, at one point I thought he was going to be lighter and then one point I thought he was going to be darker. It, it just, he just kind of did his own thing. Like it was like, and then, you know, after you mat them, you don't know what color they're going to be necessarily. Because the mat kind of like changes them a little bit. And so I'm just like. So yeah. And then I tried a different technique with his. Uh, like his modeling and stuff like that. So I was just like. I don't know. Like I'm like. I wasn't sure how it was going to look after the mop. You know the matting. Look at look at this little bald head. <laughs> Little, little bald head baby. <laughs> Let me see what y'all can see. He's so bald. And I rooted his eyebrows. So sometimes guys, his his eyebrows be like wow, but they brush back in place. Um but yeah, that's <laughs> his little bald head. Don't judge my baby. Say don't judge me. I tease, I'm gonna get it together. Mama go give me some edges one day. It's probably gonna be more like February before I can actually like really Give him edges, edges. Like, and Taraji is like right here. Like, I almost tripped over her. Like, she's right sitting down over here in this corner with the rest of those, the toddlers. They're over there with uh, Charlotte. We've been loving that little basket that uh, the artist sent with uh, Zuri because all the babies been been in it. So. Sorry, I know I'm probably in the light. But yeah, so customs, I think definitely silicone is, is very hard like um, to do customs with silicone. I really prefer not to. Um, but I can't say that I, I won't do a paint job in silicone. But I think I, I think I will try to avoid that much. But painted kits and reborns, I think I feel a little bit more confident about it my problem is time management i feel like i i work 24 7 but it's what i'm working on is the problem like um i have aborted like so many projects um so i was working on what kids I was working on some kits. I'm not going to even say what name they are because then people think, oh, she doesn't like the kit. That's why she stopped. <laughs> so I was working on the certain kits and um, um, I got other kits in and I kind of pushed that kit to the side. And then I, I um, was looking at some baby pictures and then I said, oh, that kind of reminds me of that sculpt. So I said, oh, I'm going to put that one back on the table. So I was painting on it for a while while I was, you know, in the mood. And then all of a sudden I lost interest. <laughs> I lost interest in it again. And so now I'm back not painting it again. So I kind of work like that and it's kind of weird. I work how I feel. Um, I have a custom silicone baby that I'm working on right now. And I was painting that one alongside with Vegas and Vegas just took all my attention at first. The other baby had my attention and Vegas was not getting touched as much. And then after a while, I just, I just went crazy over Vegas. And, um, so then <laughs> that baby just kind of lost its, its spot, but now I'm back focused in on that baby. So, um, which is nice because I'm really enjoying it. And I'll probably, oh my gosh, I didn't change your diaper. I was supposed to change this diaper into this diaper. <sighs> I hate it here. Well, I guess it'll be okay. I'll change it later. I'm trying not to leave that diaper on him like too long 
but I think it's fine actually. It's an honest diaper, so it should be fine. But um, by the way, which honest diapers works really good with real babies, um, a lot better than some of the other diapers actually. But uh, so yeah, so so that's how that's my problem is that I I can't focus on time like. I, I I switch projects. I paint according to how I feel that day, and I may not be feeling a particular sculpt. So if, if it's a custom and I have a timeline of when I need to finish it, it's it's gonna piss somebody off because I'm gonna be like either sometime I can be ahead of schedule and sometime I can be behind schedule. Like like I set my own schedule. Like the only customs that I take this I know this sounds so selfish and petty. But the only people that I've worked on babies or took customs from is people that said, basically, you can do what you want. Now, one of them, I know I really couldn't do exactly all that I want because I I know she's particular. But um, I know also that she doesn't she doesn't rush you. She doesn't um, she understands that this is hand painted art. And so it's like every single thing is not going to be like scrutinized type thing um you know because you run into that too a lot of people they 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 think these babies are going to be like so perfect and seamless and flawless and it, it just it just doesn't work that way um but those are the only people that i've i've really took like um the last customs from is people that just are like do whatever you want type thing and i know that's bad um, one, I do know she likes a lot of details and she likes her babies. Like I like my baby. She like them bruised, beaten and battered. I'm <laughs> just kidding. We, we joke like that, but we like scratches and bruises and, you know, milk bumps and, you know, all that great little, little pimples. We like stuff like that. And so, um, so I'm, um, and then, uh, the other one, um, is just like, they just want you know want the particular sculpt and they want it to be beautiful and then the other one was well, same thing they want that particular sculpt and they just want me to enjoy painting it so that they can get the baby that they want so basically I've been painting these babies like they're my own and I actually sometimes kind of try to psych myself out in my head to think that they're my own and another thing I've done is I've decided that, and this is what I try to tell myself too to relieve pressure, is that I can afford to pay for their kit. So if I mess up, I will refund them for their kit. Now, mind you, I think one of them is sold out. Um, that might be an issue. She might hate me, but at least she won't be out of her money for paying for the kit. Um, that's something that I, I also go for. And I also don't accept I haven't accepted money up front for them. That's another thing I do to relieve myself of pressure because if I'm holding somebody else's money, I feel like I feel a lot of pressure because I've I've been rushed to pay in times and or felt pressure to go ahead and pay a dollar off and then only to wait six, eight, nine months and you know, still no baby and it's like you know, if it goes way past the deadline, I'm thinking to myself, like, why did I even rush to pay it off? I could have been and bought like five other babies and made this money up, you know, and paid later. But yet and still my money is tied up for half a year or a whole year and still no baby type situation. So I try not to do that to other people, but I understand why people ask for money up front because you don't want to finish the baby and then they don't have the money. But, um, so, you know, just the whole buying and selling process is just complex all in itself. Um, but either way, um, I, I think this, this time showed me that I can do customs, but under very <laughs> special circumstances, if that makes sense. Um... I still don't know what I'm doing as a painter. 
um so that's another reason why i can't really do custom customs like you can't be like i want the baby to be memphis color or i want the baby to be taraji color or i want the baby to be zora's color because i don't really know how it got there and i don't know if i can get there again or what it's gonna be um these painters out here are amazing that does customs and they're able to like get spot on like they they they'll you know do the baby the same way I, maybe if I save, but even if I save the colors, I wouldn't know in which step because I use the same exact colors on every single baby. Every single baby that I've painted, I've used the same exact colors for the last how many ever years I've been painting. Um, both in silicone and vinyl. They just all have a different outcome. So I'm assuming it's the amount of how much that color I use or how I apply it or I don't know like what I'm using to apply it with like I don't know it's just so many different factors maybe that changes that which is kind of weird but um maybe you know I have even thought like maybe I should take a class like in you know on like techniques like the color wheel I don't I don't know the color wheel Oh my gosh, one of my, my, my artist friends used to tell me all the time when I first started painting, you gotta learn, the, you gotta know the, the, the color wheel. And my daughter, which is an artist, and she went to school for art. She went to a very, very, um, very, very uh, nice art school. Um, she graduated from School of Arts. And uh, she, <laughs> she said, mommy, you gotta learn the, the, the color wheel. Uh, yeah, no. How we gonna figure out the color wheel is we gonna see if this color look right. If it don't look right, we know that ain't the way it's supposed to go. And then if that don't work out and we put this color on it and it don't balance it out, then that ain't the way it go. Cause they say like if the color wheel, how you balance it out is the color right directly across from it should balance the color out, I think, or something like that. I don't know. But child, ain't nobody got time for that. Like, listen, we gonna let this paint do what it do. And whatever color it come out with, that's what we going with. If he turn out to be black, he gonna be black. If he turn out to be white, he gonna be white. If he turn out to be biracial, he gonna be biracial. If he turn out to be, I don't know, Indian or uh, Chinese or whatever, listen, whatever y'all wanna call them, that's what they gonna be. Cause we not finna go through all that. So anyway, this is a long behind video. I don't really feel it myself today, ain't I? All right, guys, I will talk to you guys later. I think I'm gonna be able to bring Grumpy on this week as well, too. So I'll be able to show Grumpy and be able to get Grumpy dressed and like, you know, just so people can really get familiar with her sculpt and uh, her little self. Um, she's another one that I, trust me, if I, if I could have, I, I, I love that face. But I do have her head as a cuddle baby head and I, I do plan to one day figure out how to hold it in something where I can hold it up and paint the head. And make me a cuddle baby of her because I love her face and those little jaws. Oh my gosh. So yeah, um, that is on my, my list to do. So um, again, I wish you all the best. This is going to be my first video of the year, which is going to be an extremely long video. And um, yeah, see you guys later. Bye-bye.